Hello everybody, welcome to Leadership in Blue Jeans. Um, I'm Frank Brzezinski, I'm your moderator for this show today. Uh, and I have uh, two wonderful guests with here, Bogdan Mihalcha and Junot Znake. Um, I will give both of them the chance to introduce themselves in their own words, so uh, everybody has an idea about um, who our conversation is going with today. Would you like to give it a start? Hello, Frank. Thank you for, uh, for inviting us. My name is Bogdan Mihalcha. I am uh, representing Aetna Romania. I have a technical background. I'm an engineer for more than 15 years, uh, working for different vendors in the IT industry. Right now, I'm, uh, I'm working for a Taiwanese company uh, in the pro EV and IT business, uh, helping companies to, to take better control of their system remotely and also uh, uh, displaying digital content on their uh, uh, different displays. Thank you. So good times for that, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Junot? Okay. Uh, Junot Znake. I'm civil engineer. Uh, 25 years of uh, different uh, management system audits, experience in uh, 15 countries audits for, uh, let's say, retailer suppliers. I founded uh, in our consulting in 2000, so 21 years old. And uh, now I'm dealing with, uh, of course, uh, uh, training online. Uh, I'm IFS representative. IFS means International Teacher Standards. Also, we have IFS Training Center, uh, and all big uh, retailers are my clients. All right. I try Hope that's going short. well, also. Yes, it's good, but I try to be as short as I can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. I am I'm sure both of you would have a lot uh, to add, but uh, just for our viewers that we uh, know uh, who's on the scene. So um, the show is about leadership and we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of aspects of leadership. And I just want to start by uh, asking you, uh, both of you, but maybe you can answer first. Do you have any, let's say, iconic leader that you look up to? Maybe a public figure that other people can relate to? And maybe if you could also say why you choose them. Well, uh, I was taking some class about leadership and uh, just by, you know, uh, curiosity, I, I searched the internet for how many uh, books in the leadership uh, are there, and I can tell you a lot. <laughs> but uh, returning to your question, which figure uh, I'm looking at, uh, I would say because I'm working in IT, uh, Steve Jobs. Right. And why is that? Maybe it's a cliche, but uh, I'm, I'm still doing it. You know? uh, it's absolutely amazing for me to see how a person like, like Steve Jobs managed to to find and motivate the, the smart people to, to create something extraordinary as value. So for me, definitely, it's a, it's a model to follow, a model to, to uh, respect and to try to implement in our own uh, way of doing the leadership. Yeah, that's certainly an extremely iconic figure that you just selected there. And I want to come back to it because I immediately have a follow-up question, but let's, sure. let's, let's see, uh, you know, do we have someone? Yes. Uh, very tough to say. Uh, why? Because uh, uh, this kind of international standards are for, for different scopes, for different industries, for different products, services and so on. So what I'm doing is like a puzzle, a Lego technique. So uh, it's difficult to find uh, someone who is, uh, let's say, best of the best in puzzles or best of the best in uh, Lego technique. Of course, I'm looking at everyone, which is, you know, with this kind of uh, structure and uh, verticality and uh, uh, quite an example for, for us. But I cannot say this is my idol or this is my, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. I no, it's not a problem at all. It's just actually, to be honest, it might also be that, um, you know, I think we know a couple of iconic leaders over time. And with some of them, we, we, we pick and choose like this aspect of that particular leader was yes, inspiring to me and this other aspect of the other man. I think you have to pick something yeah. from everyone. Yeah, yeah. So maybe it's another puzzle. Yeah. Yes, I like something that, okay, I can do it. It's, it's appropriate to me, to my style, to, to my people, to my team. So it's another yeah, puzzle. Yeah, so makes sense. In the end, what matters, I think, it's what we want to, to achieve. 
So if we want to achieve something in particular, then look for the people which did it already. So try to understand how they did it. Yes. It's very simple. And related to that, what do you think are the hallmark traits of a great leader? You mentioned Steve and the achievements. Well, uh, I think it's very important for a leader to have a vision, first of all, and to be persistent to follow it. Uh, having a goal, having something great in mind and trying and struggle to reach it. You know, no matter uh, when, how, with whom, but you know, keeping the focus in mind, it's, it's the most important thing for a leader to, mm -hmm. to have. And of course, inspiring people to do it, you know, finding the, the uh, uh, early adopts, adopters to, to follow you and uh, leverage your influence uh, in, in some groups, it's very important. But having the clear picture in mind, the vision, is the most important thing for start. Yeah, and then the persistence and the grit Absolutely. to follow through. Having patience, you know, because it takes uh -huh. time to, to implement everything. Yes, it makes sense. You have to stay on your platform. Yeah. Stay on it. Of course, love people. If you don't love people, you cannot do anything. Listen, people. This is what auditor has to do, to listen, listen, listen. Then, of course, try to, to find their uh, approach what do they think about this and of course you have to take a decision so it's a i don't know i like it like uh, i'm joking you know what you are doing i'm civil engineer i'm building so now now it's uh, something very very interesting you know that it's this kind of sustainability and embassy and coalition uh, for uh, uh, sustainability romania romania sustainability so you can imagine we are trying to, to go to about uh, this kind of targets 2000, sorry, 2030. There are 70 uh, targets and all Romania has to go to these 17 targets. So we have a target. Then uh, the idea is how to do it. Because when we are discussing about sustainability, you have to start from school new generation, education, trainings, and so on and so on. And of course, I found out that it is a standard. You can imagine. It's ISO 37,101. Well, I'm impressed now. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And it's about communities. So they, they, they have this new, uh, uh, let's say, puzzle with a new image, which it means uh, sustainability commu uh, co communities in Romania. Because you cannot go to that target if the village has such targets for that direction, then the, I don't know, for Comuna, you know. No. Okay, and then small uh, village, uh, sorry, small cities, cities, capital of regions, government, you all have to go there. Do you think as, as established, experienced leaders, we should be involving ourselves voluntarily with the education of younger people, because you were mentioning it starts very yes. early. Yes, yes. It's men. Do you do Definitely. any of those? Uh, do, you, do you do that? Well, uh, we have a, a problem in our education system, for sure. Uh, we, uh, comparing to other external countries do, uh, they starting from, from the early age, to uh, uh, teach their, their children how to take decisions by themselves. Unfortunately, we don't have this type of approach in our schools. So, for example, me as a parent, I try to uh, uh, allow my, my kid from very early age to take his own decisions, you know. Every small thing like, what do you eat today? Or what uh, toy do you use today? How do you want to spend the day, for example? It's very important from the early age for a, for a person to be able to take uh, his or her own decisions. I mean, this is the foundation of a leader. Now, a leader has to take decisions, sometimes very hard decisions, because it involves people's lives. But we have to practice it as early as possible. That's that's my, my opinion. That's a good point. Do you have Said a thought about on that? Demic. <clears throat> I can say Demic. Mm -hmm. About, let's say, a leader or something like this. 
uh, and about the principle and what he said, it's a PDCA, plan, do, check, act. And if you're going uh, in 3D, it's like this. So after first uh, circle, you have to take a, an act, yes, PDCA. What it means A, you have to think about another P, which is an, another plan. So regarding what, uh, what he says, if you are not thinking about this, okay, we have a target, what we are doing, let's roll it, PDCA, first one. Then you have to check, because it's check. Okay, what uh, figures we have? Okay, we analyze the, the, the checks, yes, okay. What decision do you make? And then again, and again, and this is a continual improvement. But the target is the same. You have to go there. Yeah. And uh, related to, to, to this and uh, related to young people, it's mandatory. They have to start to think about what? About what we don't have now. KPIs, targets, resources, uh, what you need, tools. And then you can ask a, uh, a manager, I give you resources, I give you tools, I give you everything. These are the targets, yes? When we want to, do, to discuss. Three months, okay. I will discuss with him after three months. Yeah. And I ask him again, where are you? Uh, okay, what do you need? Money, people, resources, okay. After six months, if you don't perform, I'm so sorry. You know, what I like about what you said uh, earlier was when you were mentioning uh, your love for people. Yes, yes. Uh, in the context of, you know, the traits uh, of a leadership. So um, what does it actually mean for both of you, really, in practice? Because I, I know you both are leaders with a history of, uh, of achieving, of target achievement, of devising the strategy, of you know, actually rolling up the sleeves and getting things done. But increasingly, over the course of your life, I'm sure you have also realized you can't do everything on your own. So you start to lead people. But what does that really mean for you? Well, how does this, let me ask this differently. If somebody would ask you about your leadership style with people, how would you describe it? Um, so I'm, I'm an uh, uh, adopter of the leadership by, by model, you know, by, by applying it. Uh, so I'm always trying to be involved, uh, be there you know, in the field, trying to, to take things as a first contact and also uh, being somehow uh, involved in coaching my team. Basically, me as a leader, I'm, I'm just a coach. So their, my success is their success and vice versa. If they succeed, I am a successful leader, right? So for this, I have to be sure that I give all the resources, all the, all the vision of the strategy they need to succeed. Because otherwise, I, if I don't have uh, this type of, of goals to set for them, I mean, I cannot ask them to follow my, let's say, my, my vision. So Quite. it's, uh, for me, it's logic. I mean, it makes sense. Right. You know, let me explain. When you are a civil engineer, and I was seven years civil engineer, they start trying you, how good you are, giving you more and more uh, working sites. So, at 27 years old, uh, I was managing seven different sites, but uh, banking head office. So, in construction, banking office is the toppest. Why? Because when I finish the bank, I give the key to the, let's say, president of the bank, and this is it. The bank can start immediately. So, uh, I was in such a situation that very young, or very, very young, I have to, to, to communicate, this is the word, communicate, with the mayor, the CEO of Electrica, the CEO of Gaz, I don't know. Why? Because I was building a bank in the middle of a city. You know, where is the banks? So, communicate is what is most important. 
then related what what Bogdan says, is something that you have to uh, have inside you. You have it or you don't have it. You can uh, learn to some techniques. You can learn some, you don't know, everything you can learn. But you, if you don't have this kind of empathy related to your people, related to your team, they don't follow you because you don't, you are not there. The same thing is when you are leading, uh, let's say, multidisciplinary auditors. I am the leader, yes, mm -hmm. lead auditor. Is that, is not auditor chef. No, this is not the translation. Is that uh, conducator de equipe. So you are leading your team. What it means? You have a huge company, a lot of processes, a lot of departments, and so on and so on. So, you are doing the plan, but let's say up to three to five uh, days, and you say, look, go there, go where, this is what you have to do, these are the processes, these are the products, come back to me, of course I am auditing also, and you have to discuss what you saw there, what do you think about this, what is your opinion. If you don't have this kind of team, and if you uh, do not choose the right people, when the owner of a company will ask you how it was, what you will say. But because you have a team, because you, you communicate so well, of course you ask him, Bogdan, what you are telling me? This is what you are telling me? You are sure? 1000% I'm sure. So when you are going to an owner, you have to be precisely, precisely 1,000% sure. Then you open your mouth and you say, these are the strong points. Yes, you are good at this. Yes, you are good at this. And then you have to say, but. Okay. And you can imagine if you don't communicate, no one will, will uh, appreciate your work. How about, how about uh, communication with uh, your team? Um, maybe, let's say, either your executive leadership team or the, the wider audience of all associates in, in the company. As, as the CEO of a company, how do, you, um, how do you communicate with people in a way that it inspires their engagement with their work and the company and the values of the company and so on? Well, returning to the previous comments, indeed, yes. I see, I believe that communication is one of the most important aspects of, of leadership. I would say even the most important, uh, more than 70%, I think, of everything is, is communication, good communication, mm -hmm. actually. Failing to communicate, you know, top down or uh, bottom up uh, is definitely a failure because no matter how good you are, if you don't communicate it, you will fail. I mean, nobody will know that you are very good and they will <laughs> don't believe you. In the same time, if you have a very good idea and you don't communicate it and you don't implement it in the right way, you will fail. So uh, communication definitely is, is mandatory. And for a leader, it's sometimes an art, you know, to communicate efficiently with the right people, finding the right people and trying to communicate in a way that they understand you, because sometimes this is a big problem. You know, you find the right person, but you don't. You are not able to uh, resonate with with them, to to send the, the right message. You know, to to make them listen to you. So, um, yeah, it, it should go both way. They should, uh, you know, also communicate you as a leader their problem, their their challenges, and you uh, to to inspire them. You know, so from this point of view. As a leader, you have to find the right message, depending and customize the message to the to the receiver, to the persons. Yeah, true. I would agree at least. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I'm not just However, telling here the, the, you know, you know. the theory. I'm I'm talking from my my own experience mm -hmm. here because I had many scenarios and and cases where. Exactly, that was the problem, the, the, the failure of communication, communicating the, yeah. the, the right issues, the right people. Yes, I can imagine, I can totally imagine. Communication with, uh, with our staff, especially with a wide, wide audience, is, uh, is, it is an art uh, in many ways. 
So, um, but I wanted to you know, stay a little bit on the subject of um, employee engagement. I don't know, in, in, in recent years, it's, it's become uh, so much of a conversation point uh, in, in companies. How can I drive more or better or consistent engagement of my employees with the work that they're doing? And um, um, just, you know, to a little context, so we always say this, you know, there's this formula, success equals talent times engagement. Correct. So, uh, and, and I wanted to learn a little bit from, uh, from both of you, is um, how do you, as uh, the top person in the company, inspire this kind of engagement, actually? Well, it's, it's very hard because, uh, unfortunately, the engagement, especially in the young, young generation, started to decrease a lot. I mean, they, they lost interest. They, they have very occupied minds, I would say. They are very engaged in different uh, uh, things. They, they process a lot of information very fast comparing to, let's say, to older types of, of management. So from this point of view, there is always a uh, challenge for us as leaders to keep their mind busy and get them, I mean, keep them involved and engaged. Uh, and we can see very simple things like personal turnover, which is, for me, one of the highest that was in the history, especially because of, of this you know, lack of, of engagement. So yeah, it, it's for us, it's a really big challenge to keep them uh, uh, engaged. And for this, you know, you have to be very, very creative, I would say. Uh, you have to sometimes uh, give them information related to personal life even, combined with the, with the company goals, company you know, uh, strategy. So you have to always be creative as a leader to keep them you know, engaged, to keep them involved yeah. in, in your goals. I wonder what is a good recipe in your uh, mind, and you know, I'm gonna ask you the same also, is um, how do you turn the mindset of a person who is coming to work because he does a job to somebody who comes to work because he felt, feels a connection with what he does and understands what he's contributing. If you are not enjoying what you are doing, it's not your job. There. Yeah. Simple. And related to you know, the way you, you manage your team, I want to say that I'm their big brother. So I'm not, let's say, general manager, I'm not the owner of a company. No, I'm a big brother, I said, come to me. What do you need? What's happening? Tell me. Uh, so you have to be very, very close to them. So they it's about connection. Connection, yes, is the is most, most important thing. And then, of course, when I select my, my, uh, my team or my people from my team, I have at least three filters up to me. So I ask Michaela, Michaela, what do you think about? Then I ask Adina, Adina, what do you think about? And then if it's necessary, I will ask Mihai, Mihai, what do you think about? And of course, we have, uh, let's say, the seniors. So they already tell me, look, this is happening, what is happening, this is our feeling, and so on and so on. In the same time, I have this privilege that since nine years ago, we start this kind of uh, IFS training center. So at these trainings, the best of the best, they come to, to, to be trained by us. And we are, let's say, the voice of the owner of a stand. So we are, when we are communicate, we are not communicate our personal point of view about look at this requirement or this specification or this uh, okay. know what chapter about. No, this is what the owner of a standard and the guy who write it was thinking about this. So the privilege is that you are scanning them since they are train, you know, trainees. Then, of course, we are picking. Not very often because we are not such a big company, but you are picking. So from the start, you are picking the best of them. And it's another issue related to uh, when you become a trainer. Uh, after more than 100 audits, after more than you saw 100 companies. Seems like a long road. Yeah. Yes, you cannot. You can imagine you are in front of them 
and someone jump up, pop up with a one question. And what you do? You have a trainer. Come on. And this is it. I don't understand how, how, come, how come someone can be a trainer or a tutor. And I ask him, what you did till now? Oh, come on. Practice, production, services. If you are not there, how to understand the processes? I understand that, but how does it relate to uh, driving the engagement of the employee? I will tell you. Okay. So, sorry. No <laughs> I'll keep my yeah, 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 yeah. in the background. You keep the thought. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you saw them. Are we really enjoyed? They are, we have different kind of projects, you know. Small companies, medium companies, huge companies. You can yeah. imagine that I was 30 years old and my first client was Citibank. Yeah. So you, you the know. idea is like this. If, if you are putting them in different kind of projects, you are monitoring them. No, I understand. I just want to give Bogdan a chance. So what do you think? Do you agree? Is this the, is this the it's answer? It's not like I, I, I agree or not. Uh, I wanted to add something. I mean, it's very important because Jonas mentioned that he's uh, lucky enough to maybe get in contact with all the employees. Uh, it's also a matter of company culture. So it's how a leader uh, sculpture the, 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 this culture. I mean, for example, if you are a startup, yes, you have fortunate enough to get in contact with every single member of, of, of this organization. If you are in a multinational, for example, with multi layers of, of management, then you as a leader, you have, you have direct contact with many, I mean, not that many people in the organization, but only with the next level of management. So then uh, it's up to you as a leader to set up this, this type of culture and of course, in this interaction between you as a, lead, uh, as a leader and them, you will transmit and form this type of culture and they will distribute it, you know, uh, to the base of the, of, the, of the organization. So if you are, let's say, close to your next level management, basically what should happen is that they will also get closer to the rest of the employees. So, so you're saying work just, environment. Let's exactly. Say. You yeah. set up the pace mm -hmm. of, the, of the culture. And, and it's another issue. Someone asked me uh, how can happen something like this that you have clients from 33 scopes. And I said, I don't know. Maybe I can do things like this. It's like you have not 33 Legos or no. It's about going even in the same scope. He's seeing the processes and his company, you, you know, in a different way. So you have to talk to your client and you, your team. And you have to pick the right pieces at the right time. Okay, in the final part of the project, the image will be the same. But no one asks you or tell you what do you have to pick and where you have to start to put the, the puzzle. Okay. So <laughs> if you like it, you will do it in, I don't know how many ways. No. Yeah. But you have to enjoy it. You have to, to, to have this kind of team that they like to, to do this. And you monitor them. So I don't know how many uh, projects I have in the same time, but I know for sure because I have to, to measure how many audits I have? 1,500 each year. And now probably because I go international, I don't know how many. It's, uh, it's something that you not, don't have to be good in, I don't know how many lines of, no. You have to be very good in just one thing. Because my question was always like this. How many things you are doing perfectly? How many? One. Maybe one. And this is it. I have a question to both of you about this. So if the question of whether you like the job, so what you're doing, you know, whether that's marketing or sales or something like that, if that's a given, I still look around and find a lot of people who actually like what they're doing, sales or marketing or being in the office with in, in the back office, something like that, but they still don't like their job. Why? What's missing? 
What could, what is it that people are missing if it's not the task, but something else? It's difficult. It's, there are many, I mean, you have to be there to understand their profile. Maybe it's something that uh, is not compatible with their personal profile. I mean, the team, the, the vision of the company is, is not a match, it's not a perfect match. Um, what do you do when you meet a person and talk with a person that has this you know, particular um, problem? First of all, uh, the modern science, let's call mm -hmm. it, of, of hiring, you know, involves many uh, process to, to, first of all, profiling the, the person, you know, this type of what kind of mm -hmm. person you are. You are an analyst, you are an <laughs> uh, extrovert or introvert. So it's very uh, essential, I think, for the for a company when hiring a new person to, first of all, check and see if that profile matches the rest of the team. Right. Because if if it doesn't, there will be some problems very soon, no matter how good that person is on the specific task that they are doing. As long as they are not matching and uh, you know uh, combining perfectly with the rest of the team, it's, it will not work. And they will automatically be pushed away out of the team. They will feel miserable and they will leave. That's one scenario. Or they mm -hmm. will influence the other team and they will destroy the, the Zen. Yeah. So for, for the uh, modern, HR manager is very important to profile from the beginning the, the, the person. It's also for the own interest of the person to, to have this screen, this previous uh, screening okay. before hiring. Yeah, and this is an important one, of course. You, you I mean, prevent there are, uh, issues down the line. There are small nuances that, you know, from the far away point of view, doesn't really, you don't mm -hmm. see them. But it can significantly impact the evolution of that employee mm -hmm. within the company and very fast. Yeah, 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 true. You know, it's it's a word. Uh, I'm reading people. Or in Romania, cites oameni. Mm -hmm. What it means, you cannot read people, come on. But it's about scanning, then selected, or select, sorry, uh, the right people. For what? For your team. Yeah. For, for the your job company. And the team. Mm -hmm. So this is it. You have to scan, 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 and then look, Frank. It's yeah. like us. Come on, Frank. It's so simple. So there are people capable of doing this natively. Yes. But fortunately, there is also science to do it. Of so course. you you can do it, you know, following some procedures without uh, letting this by chance, you know, and just yeah. hoping that that person is, is right for you. Okay, good. So we're nearing the end of our time, uh, but I wanted to leave you with uh, both one question. Maybe you can, I don't know, more or less spontaneous giving an answer to this. So if I would ask you, um, as a leader, the moment you leave the room, what would you like people say about you? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you to us. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, why, when is the toughest one? Please. <laughs> Regrets, of course. Uh, something like this. Uh, why did, don't you stay a little bit more with us? Something like this. Yes, if you are, if we are uh, uh, with them, from them, uh, teammates. Of course, when someone leaves, you say, oh, so sorry, Bogdan has to leave. <laughs> it's something nice. natural, it's so natural. Everything can, can be natural if you have, let's say, good intention and yeah. with good ha uh, faith. Thank you for answering that first. Now, <laughs> yours is less spontaneous, but it's still half spontaneous. <laughs> yes. No, I, I would love to, to hear this uh, so, uh, affirmation after I leave, you know. Wow, I, this person completely uh, disrupt my way of thinking. You know, I was expecting something else, but yeah. he put me in a different position that oh, I was I like in the beginning. Also. Good. <laughs> so I would like to, to change people, to move people from the place that they were in a totally different place. You know, and for that's, them that's my feel, challenge. And for them, it feel like a win. Exactly. Like exactly. an, like an uh, you know, development. Exactly. Because I board. like to, to uh, let them let people evolve by themselves. Mm -hmm. Me as a leader, you know. Super. Well, Bogdan, thank you so much. 
Thank you, you for inviting You too for us. taking the time and coming here and sharing your views with us. Uh, we also like to thank very much the viewers and also Mindspace for generously giving us this uh, studio to uh, record this episode. And with that, uh, we say goodbye and until the next time.